last little bit, <coughs> excuse me, of corn harvest for 2025. My name is Cale Carlson. I'm out here in the middle of Nebraska, owner operator of Lead Farms. Do I have time to do part two of the Case IH 8250 Case versus Kloss? No, not really. Are you energetic and motivated to do it? No, not really. But am I going to shoot it? Yes, why not? American flag is flying. I will get enough motivation to do a slam bang quick run over as I finish corn harvest in non GMO white corn. Terrible problems at the bin site, but we we're able to haul grain on Monday. Happy Saturday. Last two days of good weather, and I still got to get my Milo out, which I will use this combine to do. Here we go. Check oil. We'll fire it up, get it warmed up. All right, rough and tumble numbers and control switches. Here is the 8250. Hit that button right there and your unfolding auger will go out. This green tank is about 410 bushels and I think about a 500 horsepower motor. Don't remember the brand of the motor, but very strong, very solid. Unloading rate, I think four, four and a half bushels per second. The Kloss 8600 was running six bushels per second, and that was fantastic. Both machines have cross auger shut off, so you can shut off the cross augers in the tank, and then your entire unloading tube will unload. Now with the Kloss, you just hit one button, and it'll automatically do it every time. This one, I have the option to shut it off or turn it on, and this is the unload. It does have a flapper dapper, hydraulic adjustable spout. So if we are not quite lined up, we can hit the secret switch here. And then you run this button and it will go in and out. I will maneuver and navigate here. So if you're not yeah, quite lined up, we have it all the way in. So that is a nice option. On the 8600 Kloss, it has that option. The one I ran did not have it, but also I didn't feel I needed it. With the square uh, rectangular downspout, I never had an issue of spilling. I was able to hit it every time. This runs your head up, down, tilt left, tilt right and then you can put it back in the middle and then this button is to run your reel on your um, platform head soybean head draper head which i will be running this afternoon all right just click that button once once you have your separator and your head engaged then you can hit this button once and it'll automatically lower the head down. I have three sensors underneath this head, so it'll float on the contour of the ground, if go up and over pivot tracks or the contour. All right, that's about it. Throttle, shoe sieve, rear sieve, front sieve, and this runs your, I forget what it's called. It's right here. It runs your veins to speed up the crop in or out of the rotor. Here's how you speed and slow your rotor and then adjust your rotor distance, your concave to the rotor. I should mention I have Estes Performance Series 3 concaves in this. I used to run the round bar concaves from Case. Now I'm running the Estes concaves. The Case round bars are good. The Estes are great. They are better. The nice thing, you can see the internal flow of this combine. I have one 30 inch rotor. Don't remember how long it is. I think it's about eight feet long, but then I got a shaker sieve here. This is the pre sieve and then the after sieve. And these are what open and close by hitting these buttons here. You can move those from inside the cab blower fan and then clean grain auger and then a returns elevating. So any of the unthreshed grain will come down here into the return elevator and that is all monitored down here that I can watch. Obviously fuel, diesel exhaust fluid, combine temperature, and then whatever external is running. Right now my grain tank is at zero. On this one I have two sensors. It'll notify me when it's 75% full and when it's 100% full. 
The other thing I liked about the Kloss is it had like, I don't know, 18 sensors back there. It would go 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, all the way up to 100%. When it was 100%, you knew to shut that baby down. Two-speed gearbox, one and two. This is for field. That's for the road. Did we get it all figured out? I'm running you through it as we warm up the machine. We got all the corn out of the grain tank and we are ready to harvest. I'm running a Case IH 4412. It's a 12 row chopping corn head and I really like the chopping op option. On the 8600 Kloss, that also was a 12 row chopping. On the Kloss machine, I don't know, I think it's rated at like a 500 horsepower motor. I was never limited on horsepower. I could go five, five and a half, six miles an hour in the Kloss with a chopping corn head. And I think I got the motor up to 100, 102%. That never felt like an issue in 240, 250 bushel corn at 15% moisture. The horsepower was not the issue with the Kloss. The horsepower is the issue with this machine, with this 12 row chopping. I will say the Kloss chop, the case chopping head does a much better job of destroying a little bit better than the Kloss corn head. But you're just, you're splitting hairs at, at that point. As far as a corn eating monster machine, this one does really good in corn. Kloss does better. It is a monster for getting throughput. Both have a good clean grain sample but if you have a thousand acres of corn, if you need to get your corn out, you want the Kloss machine. It's just a little bit better on capacity, harvesting, and unloading auger. I felt like I could harvest actually more bushels per hour with the 8600 than I could with this 8250. Oh good, I was recording that whole time. Five. All right, that wraps it up for this evening. Thanks for joining live. Thanks for joining along. Thanks for everybody that was joining the live stream that I did. A couple more comments about the 8250 that it has. It has a sunshade on the left and the front. I do not have a sunshade over here. And the Kloss 8600 had three sunshades, which is very nice. Kloss did not have foot pegs. This combine does, and I find myself putting my feet up here quite often. They might have an option on future generations of machines, but foot pegs, the spout adjuster, and sunscreens are very important to me. Very minor, very small, but those are a couple options that this Case 8250 has. There was one other thing that I was thinking about. Obviously heated and cooled seats. Oh, on the Kloss 8600, both seats were very nice. Leather, very comfortable chairs to sit in, even if you have a buddy in the buddy seat. And they had a refrigerator down below. This one also has a refrigerator. I don't plug it in, but I do fill it full of drinks. It makes it very nice for the farmers sitting out here for many hours of the day. Anyway, any other comments you have about the Case IH Combine that I missed, comment down below. Otherwise, we're shutting down the live stream, shutting off the combine. I am back into Milo. Finished corn today into Milo, and the machine was very easy to set. I think I did a good job. We'll take a look at it in the morning. Very good Milo crop. So all crops were good in Nebraska. Thanks for joining along. Thanks for all the memberships and the subscribers. Thumbs up, help me, likes, and comments. Appreciate everybody following along. Almost done with harvest. A couple more days and we'll all go home.